Hey everybody, this is Cow Killer from Boiling Steam. I got another review unit by Tuxedo Computers, based in Germany. This particular unit is the Polaris. It's a laptop with a 15.6 inch screen, and it has an AMD Ryzen 5 processor, 4600H, and a RTX 2060. It's not quite as powerful as the servo unit that I have from System76, but I think it would be still make a very capable gaming machine. Now right off the bat before I unbox this there's a couple of quirks based on the email exchanges that I had with uh, the press team at Tuxedo. First of all the keyboard layout is not Q-W-E-R-T-Y instead it has the Q-U-E-R-T-Y keyboard layout. So it's something I've never seen before so it'll be pretty interesting to see what that's all about and what kind of adjustment I might need to make. And then the second quirk is I don't have the right charger with this. This is using a European plug, at least based on the email exchanges that I had. So hopefully I'll have the right adapter so I can charge this thing. So with that out of the way, let's see what we got. Got my trusty old steak knife here. We got some black foam for the corners and here we have ourselves a black casing followed by more black pieces of foam. One thing I will notice this box is much smaller than the box that System76 uses. Okay so now that we got that let's uh, open this baby up. Got more black foam here, a little thin piece of foam, and here's the laptop. Got a sticker right there to seal the wrap together. Oh, would you look at that? So right off the bat, I'm very impressed with this. This is much thinner than the Serval WS. It still has an RTX 2060 in it though. So that is very impressive. That they managed to put it in a thinner form factor and still maintain the same screen size. Same kind of uh, wrap. I put for the screen, the System76. Wow, this is, this is pretty nice. Feels very smooth. I'm guessing it's magnesium alloy. Could be plastic. Could be mate, I don't know. Uh, looks like the webcam is way at the bottom here, instead of usually being at the top on most laptops. Here we got a second uh, layer of plastic to peel off in the palm rest area and one for the trackpad. I really like that tux key. They got that for the super key. That's pretty nice. So what do we got for ports here? We have, looks like we have an ethernet jack, a USB 2.0 port, the microphone jack and the headphone jack, Kensington lock. Doesn't look like we have anything on the front. And then on the right side we have a regular SD card slot. Two USB 3.0 ports. Uh, anything on the back. We have two mini display ports. An HDMI port and a USB C slot. And the power jack is in the back. So where's our power button? It looks like it's on the right key here. There's another button here which I believe brings up the menu on Tuxedo OS. So it looks like Ubuntu is listed here. Looks like it's using Grub. All 
Okay, so the operating system that comes pre-installed with the Polaris is Tuxedo Computer's own operating system called Tuxedo OS. It is based off of Ubuntu using the Budgie desktop environment. So here we got our language selection here. No, we don't want the German keyboard layout. We want the US keyboard layout. Let's see if this works. QWERTY. Oh, beautiful. Let's so, uh, go ahead and connect to Wi-Fi here. Right shift key is still pretty small, just like on the System 76's laptops, so that may need some adjusting. Look, we only got 47 minutes left on the battery, 29% remaining. Looks like we're at full brightness, I'm going to go ahead and set it on half brightness. And what it looks like, it seems it's using the same installer as Ubuntu, same options and everything. Alright, I'm just let it install the system, let it do its thing. And just like with the servo, I'll run some updates, get OBS Studio installed so I can start recording from the desktop and then we'll move on from there. So in the meantime, let's see what else we got here. So, for so the rest of the unit we have our AC adapter. I'm going to need to plug this in pretty quick because that battery was pretty low. So apparently this is what the European plug looks like. Eh, that's interesting. But fortunately for us, I got a US power cord. What do we have in this right pocket? I'm curious. Okay, so it looks like we got a couple of stickers. Ryzen 5 4000 series, Radeon graphics, GeForce RTX. And then here, or just a little notepad. Looks like we get two pens. That's pretty cool. And then we get a flash drive. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder how, what the capacity on this is. So one problem that I've noted right off the bat is after setting up the user account password and then trying to log in, my password was apparently incorrect, even though I had double checked it twice when setting up the user account. So now I've discovered that's what that USB device is for. It's a recovery drive that you can plug into a tuxedo computer and boot from it so that you can install an operating system. And unfortunately, I think that's what I'm going to have to do here because something's going on with my password. Oh, looks like we need a wired Ethernet connection for this. Okay, try this again. Alright, let's see what we got here. We got reboot, power off, and we want a laptop install. Come on, anytime now. One minute, 37 seconds later. Okay, so it looks like we've got our options here. We've got Tuxedo OS, we've got Ubuntu, we got Ubuntu Budgie, Tuxedo OS, we got OpenSUSE, we got Manjaro, Kubuntu. Uh, we got all sorts of options here. So, what I want to do is I want Tuxedo OS long-term support. I'll go ahead and let it do its thing. Okay, so I don't know what happened there, but apparently I didn't set the right password because I was not able to log in for the first time. But after inserting that flash drive in and reinstalling Tuxedo OS, I can now log in. This is the first thing that pops up as soon as the user account is set up. We have our dialog box here. Installation configuration is nearly done. You are only one shutdown away from using your laptop at full power. Please press the OK button, enter your password on the next page, and power on your notebook after the following shutdown. We wish you a lot of fun with your new tuxedo. <laughs> I want to take a spelling course. Alright, let's just tap OK and uh, enter our super user password. Let's do a thing. I don't know what exactly it will be doing, but. Just let it do its thing. It looks like uh, we got our NVIDIA graphics drivers pre-installed. 
that's a plus. Let me just see what we got here. Four fifty. Nice. Okay, that's a plus. So I tested the microphone. It's not the best quality microphone, but at least hopefully you can understand what I'm saying. You can hear me fine. I also have the noise suppression filter added in OBS. I don't exactly know what progress means. Is it partitioning the hard drive? Is it trying to install something? I don't know what this is doing. I don't know if it's running updates. Let's take a look at what we have for pre-installed applications here. Alright, let's see what we got for updates here. Wow, all packages are up to date. Okay, so this is Tuxedo OS 20.04 and as you can see here it is using the Budgie desktop environment and it looks like it's kernel 5.6 it has a Ryzen 5 processor and an RTX 2060 it looks like there is 32 gigabytes of RAM and I don't know how much hard drive space we have I believe it's a terabyte yeah looks like it's a one terabyte NVMe drive so let's see what we got for pre-installed apps here so we got a archive manager a calculator tuxedo web FAI creator we got FreeSiv, MindTest, LibreOffice, Firefox, Thunderbird, ooh, KDE Connect. We got Cheese, we got VLC, Rhythmbox, all the stuff that comes with Budgie, the NVIDIA graphics settings, Thunderbolt, Tuxedo Control Center. Now let's take a look at that Tuxedo Control Panel. Oh wow, this is nice. So it's telling us the temperature of our CPU, the frequency of it, GPU temperature, number of active cores. Now it looks like we got uh, profiles that we can change here. Got a shutdown timer. Oh, it looks like we can change theme colors on the fly. Oh, I do like this dark theme a lot. Okay, here are our profiles. Default, cool, and power saver. I think we can keep it as default, but we can create a new profile if we wanted to. Let's shut down timer. Shuts down the computer a specific time. Okay, that's cool. Can I change this? Uh, I guess not. No, it looks like we got a phone number that we can contact, online support. Ooh, system diagnostics. Remote support. Wow, that's awesome. I can also launch the tuxedo control panel with a button right on the laptop itself, so that is pretty convenient. One thing that I already like over the Servo WS is this actually has a battery that actually lasts more than an hour. It's been sitting around for, uh, we'll have to see, maybe it'll go back down to zero in half hour from now, but it seems like it's a lot longer lasting than the Servo WS's battery. If we look at the amount of desktop wallpapers there are, there is quite a few, so this is the default wallpaper and then we can kind of choose a color variant of that so if I wanted a little bit of purple in there I could do that I got a motorcycle or a moped whatever it is a boat I got all kinds of stuff here this is uh this is pretty cool got a picture of a bird Got a picture of shoes, the sunset. I wonder if those are actually photos taken in Germany around where Tuxedo Computers is located. Shuffleboard. Sure, why not? Train. The hard part is what do I want for a, a background? I don't even know what that is. I don't see any cars. I don't know if that's a bridge or that. Looks like we got some of Canonical's wallpapers here too. This is a indicator when caps lock is on or off. It's also physically indicated on the laptop itself. This is an indicator for the numlock key. Got our quick notes here. We can enable night light if we want to. 
testing our Wi-Fi speeds we have 152 megabits per second download speed the serval WS was 225 in the same room still pretty impressive but not quite as far reaching as the serval WS's Wi-Fi card one thing that I've noticed is that it has a maximum refresh rate of 60 Hertz the serval WS had 144 Hertz as a available refresh rate as for battery life, you're going to get about two hours on a single charge. Whether you're doing video editing or you're looping a 1080p 60 frames per second video like this, you're going to get about two hours on the on-demand CPU governor. While that may sound like it's not a long time, it is about twice the battery length of the Serval WS, so if you're looking for a little longer battery life, Tuxedo Polaris may be the way to go. Moving on to benchmarks, we have the kernel compile tests here with the Fronix test suite. It looks like it's about 124 seconds. That is pretty decent. If we look at the online results for compiling the kernel, it is around the 40th percentile mark. It matches pretty closely to the Ryzen 5 Pro. Then of course, what is a gaming laptop without doing a couple of gaming benchmarks? So I was able to run F1 2017, which is a native Linux tile brought to us by Feral Interactive. And we got about 65 frames per second on average on the ultra high preset at 1080p with temporal anti-aliasing. If we go down here, uh, I apologize that these aren't exactly in order, but uh, ultra high 65 frames per second and ultra low at 103, and then the rest of the graphics presets are somewhere in between that, so it's not that bad. As for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I could not get this game to benchmark through the Pharaonix test suite, so I had to manually run them myself. But here are all the frame rates on all the graphics presets. So, to summarize it all, here's the average frame rate for all of the graphics presets. We're looking at about 70 frames per second on ultra high. Now, the Serval WS was over 80 frames per second on ultra high on the same 1080p resolutions. But that makes sense because the Serval WS 2070 than the RTX 2060 that the Polaris is using. So the Tuxedo Polaris isn't really all that bad of a laptop. I like the fact that it's very thin considering that it has a dedicated graphics card and it's got a longer battery life than the Servo WS. It does suffer from a couple of issues such as poorly translated English documentation upon booting the device for the first time and because Tuxedo OS is using Ubuntu, it is going to have that problem of having outdated packages that more often than not, if you want to have the Bleeding Edge software, you have to opt into a PPA for whatever program it is that you're using. The graphics drivers are not up to date, it's 450 rather than the 460 that's out right now. But it's, it's still a pretty good gaming machine, not quite as powerful as the Servo WS, but again that makes sense because the Serval WS is using a Ryzen 7 processor and an RTX 2070 over the Ryzen 5 and RTX 2060 in this. Still, it's a very good gaming machine. I'll have a more in-depth review of this laptop on Boiling Steam in the coming weeks, so please stay tuned for that, and thank you for watching this video.